So in this session, we talk about the concept of average size of the bulk of particles. Now the idea here is that if you have the bulk of particles with different sizes, what is the average size or D? Now here we have some assumptions first. So the first assumption is that the particles are of the same shape. This give us pi is to be constant. Also, we will assume that this phi is, is or its felicity is known. The second assumption is that the particles are the same materials. This gives the rho p to be constant. Also, we will assume that both phi s and rho p are known. Now, a little bit of detour about what does it mean by average. So, if you ask yourself the question, what does mean or average mean? So, when you say average or mean, the first thing that comes out is one particular type of mean. For example, if I say for profit, so for my business, if the profits are 10k, 15k, 20k in three successive years, we have an mean or average profit of 15k. Now this is true because the profits can be added. However, think about the growth rate, another term. A business is a growth of 10%, 0%, and 50% in three successive years. What would be the average or mean growth? Now, if you take the average of these three numbers, 10, 0, and 50, you get an average of 20%. However, is this right? Is the average growth is 20%? So, if you look at the business, you see after the first year with the 10% growth, so the business value becomes 1.1. The second year, the 0% growth, it's become 1. The third year, with the 50% growth, it's 1.5. So at the end of the third year, the business will be 1.65 times what it was three years back. Now, if we use the mean value of this 20%, what you get? So mean value 20% when you are assuming 20% growth in each year, you'll end up getting a number something like 1.728. So you see that the business growth was at the end of third year, it's 1.65 times what was at the beginning of three years back. However, if we use the mean value, it becomes something like this 1.728, which is not correct. So for this case, what you have to do, we have to use another type of mean. So to get it, if you take 1.1 times 1 times 1.5 and take a cube root, because there are three numbers here, you'll get the mean, which will be around 1.18. So the mean growth or average growth here is 18%, not this 20% that you will get by taking simply this average of these three numbers. This is what is called this geometric mean. And if you look at these numbers now, 18%, you will see that if you multiply 1.18, times 1.18 times 1.18 it will give you the value of 1.643 which is closer to the true value 1.65 so this is called what is called this geometric mean and this is what is called this arithmetic mean so we know at least these two, two different ways to estimate the mean now the basic idea is that this Arithmetic mean that we typically use is not applicable for all cases. So somewhere you need to use some other type of mean. So for calculating the average particle size, we have four different types of this mean diameter. So 
when you know the particle size distribution and you want to estimate an average of this distribution we have four different ways number one is the what is called this arithmetic mean diameter number two is what is called mass mean diameter number three called surface mean diameter and number four is called volume mean diameter so we have four different ways to express the mean diameter of a bulk of particles now let's look at this mean diameter one by one the first one is arithmetic mean diameter this concept is simple if you have particles so three particles dp1 dp2 dp3 so the mean diameter we can represent simply as dp3 over 3 now if you have n1 particles belonging to the group size dp1 and n2 particles to the size group dp2 and you have small n different groups the particle dp n so we'll write this dn arithmetic mean equals simply it will be n1 times dp1 plus n2 times dp2 plus all the way n n times dpn over n1 plus n2 all the way n n so simply which becomes dn equals so this is the definition of arithmetic mean diameter arithmetic mean diameter means if you have particles of unequal size particles belonging to this distribution the arithmetic mean diameter says if you had the same number of particles of equal size what would be that size that would give you the same length if you put the particles one by one again what does arithmetic di mean diameter means that if you have a bulk of particles if you had the same number of equal size particles what would be that size that would give you if you put the particles one by one they will form the equal length so this bulk and this bulk would form the equal length so that's the arithmetic mean diameter tells you that particular size now the second type is what is called this mass mean diameter the mass mean diameter is similar to this arithmetic mean diameter we represent it as d root bar however for this case instead of weighting by n i it's weighted by x i which is the mass fraction so we have summation of i equals 1 to n x i d p i summation of x i where this x i would be the mass fraction belonging to each group so if this group had a mass fraction x 1 and this group has a mass fraction x n for this entire group the mass mean is calculated as this simply look at this for these two equations you have the weighting parameter to be xi instead of ni however don't get it confused with this does not mean that this equal such particle would give the same mass that doesn't mean it okay we'll see later when you do the volume and diameter we'll see another concept third one is what is called this surface mean diameter For the surface mean diameter, the idea is that if you have a bulk of particle and if you have the same number of equal size particle, what would be that size to give you the same surface area 
as the bulk. So again, if you have a bulk of particles, surface mean diameter will tell you if you had the same number of particles with equal size, what would be the size that will give you the same surface area as that of the bulk. So now if you have these two groups, unequal size particles, and if you have this group with equal size particles, remember that the number should be the same. So there are n particles here and also and particles there. The surface area will be the same. Now we know that when you have particles with unequal sizes, so we know that this specific surface area is given by 6 over phi s rho p summation of x i over d p i and summation of x i. Now you know that if you take all the masses, the summation of xi is 1. So now this summation of xi comes here simply because in many cases you may want to find the specific surface area if you choose, instead of choosing all the screens, if you choose one subset of the screens. In that case, summation of xi will not be 1. That's why it comes here. Because in that case, the specific surface area should be divided by the only for the screens that you are taking. For this equal size particles, if you take the size to be ds bar, its surface area will be 6 over phi s rho p, p1 over ds. So because it simply has only one size, you have 1 over ds. Because in that case, the xi is 1 and the summation of xi is also 1. So now going back to the definition that the surface mean diameter is the diameter of the same number of equal size particles that will give the same specific surface area. So now equating these two, we'll have And this will give you ds to be 1. So this is the formulation for this surface main diameter. So number four is the volume in diameter. So volume in diameter tells you if you have a bulk of particles, what would be the size of the same number of equal size particles that will give the same volume as that of the bulk. Now for this case, if you look at the volume of this unequal size particles, we can write this volume to be summation of mi over rho p where this summation of mi will give the total mass and divide by the density it will give you the total volume. Now volume can also be obtained as A dpi cube summation of all of this. So A is the volume shape factor dpi cube. So you multiply the diameter cube with the volume shape factor, you get the volume. So this will give for this individual group and then all this volume added together give you the entire volume. Now for the equal size particle, we know that if you multiply this dv bar cube, you get the volume of individual particle. And if you multiply this by the number of particles, you get the total volume, which is the volume of this entire bulk. So you have the volume of this part to be this and the volume of the equal particle to be this. And by the definition of volume in diameter is the size that will give you the same volume as that of the bulk. So now we need to equate this two. Now in how many number of particles are there you can find out by expressing n equals summation of n i meaning number of particles belonging to each group which can be again obtained as mass belonging to each group over the volume of one particle belonging to each group multiplied by this 
rho p that will give you the mass of so this give you the mass of one particle this gives you the mass of particle belonging to that group and this will give you the total number of particles belonging to each group and so if you take the summation over you will get the number of particles altogether. So now equating these two we have v equals mi over rho p so that's the volume of this bulk so we'll equate this with this so now if we replace this with this formulation here so this one you get instead of n you replace by this so summation of mi over a dpi cube rho p times a dv bar q so you see this a and a gets cancelled out this rho p and rho p gets cancelled out and if we take dv so we'll have dv cube to be over dp now if we divide both the numerator and denominator by the total mass you'll get xi over x i over d p a cube. Now that's equal d v cube. So if you take d v bar, it will be this raised to the power one third. So that's the formulation for this volume mean diameter. So we have seen this arithmetic mean diameter. It's simply the average that we typically know in the general sense. That is this mass mean diameter where the ni is replaced by xi. Third one is the surface mean diameter. This summation of xi over summation of xi over dpi. And this summation of volume mean diameter which is summation of xi over summation of xi over dpi cube raised to the power one third. So first case we looked at that the arithmetic mean diameter will give you if you have the same number of equal size particles that will give you the same length as that bulk if you put the particles side by side for surface spin diameter it's again the diameter of the same number of equal size particle that will give you the same surface area now volume in diameter is similarly the diameter of equal sized of same number of particles that will give you the same volume as that of the bulk remember that when it gives the same volume meaning it will give the same mass so don't confuse, confuse with mass mean diameter mass mean diameter does not give you the same mass simply because you can think about it's equivalent to arithmetic mean diameter with only the weighting factor to be xi instead of ni